Hello YouTubers, uh, I hope you're having a good day. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to open up uh, an ASUS monitor, PG27UQ, and see if we can mod it. As you know, this monitor has uh, active cooling and the fan makes a lot of noise. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to open the monitor and see if we can actually reduce the noise. I don't know if it's the noise is visible. Uh, sorry for the mess on my desk, but uh, right now the monitor is is mounted on a uh, on an arm. So let's see if we can take it out and uh, open the back shell or the casing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open those four screws. I'm not going to include it in the video because it's something simple and then from there I'm going to show you the rest. Okay, so I've taken out those four screws which are for the the VESA mount arm. Uh, you're going to need you're going to need to take out those standoffs in order to open it. So what I suggest for this uh, you're gonna need a wrench if you have those uh, standoffs and for opening the shell you're gonna need some sort of guitar pick uh, or I don't know what they call it shim something like this uh, works I had a, a kit for opening an iPhone I suggest using something more sturdy like this to open, which has like two levels. So something like this would, would work great. Uh, so I'm gonna take start taking the standoffs. I, with this wrench, I'm gonna loosen them up. So take those out. Just loosen them up. Make sure nothing is screwed in. You have to take them out. Or if you have the original mount, uh, you can take that mount out. I'm not sure how um, that works because I have taken out the original stand a long time ago. But if you reach to this point, then you should be good to go for taking the, the shell off. So I'm gonna mount my phone to a stand so I can show you better and we'll proceed with taking the shell out. Okay, so I forgot to, to mention something. Uh, it is best to have a, a soft blanket like this so you don't scratch the screen of the monitor when you lay it on the, on the blanket. What you wanna do, you wanna start I, th I think it's best to start from the the bottom of the monitor where the 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 HDMI cable display port USBs and the power is connected now do realize that I have already taken uh, the shell a couple of times so you might actually feel a little bit more uh, resistive or resistance in my case, it's a little bit easier, but the shim, you want to go from the bottom and start just like that. And be careful when you reach the end where the uh, there's a, like a little LED. Uh, just be careful because there's a ribbon here. You don't want to cut it. So just don't go too deep and make sure when you're using the, the guitar pick, 
it's not too long so you don't cut that but as you can see on it's opening up on this side so the beauty of this blanket is you can just rotate it and go to the side this is a better view just be patient with it don't use too much force and if you hear the sound it's just the the clips that are getting opened up so don't worry you're not going to break anything So you start your way from, you start from this side and then we just went to the top and then we're just working around to the side. And I think we're almost good. Let's see. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Seems like it's open on all the sides. Just be careful when you. It's probably on the other side. Yeah, so let's rotate this. Here you have the bottom on this side. When you lift this up, there are two ribbon cables. Actually, one ribbon cable and one thicker connector. I don't know if you see it. Let me show you a better angle. Okay, so the angle that I want to show you and the connector. So that's the connector that you want to take out the ribbon. So you simply lift this side up just like that and then you take it out like that and for the other one you want to you want to wiggle a little bit on this one just be patient wiggle a little bit and that's it it's out and now the whole back shell or the casing is out all right, so now I'm gonna plug the, the power and show you, as you see, as you can see, it's, it's already been modded, but I'm gonna explain what's going on here. Okay, so now uh, I'm gonna plug in the display port. And I'm going to plug in the power. You don't need to plug in the display port, but I prefer to do it so I know how hot the the FPGA that is right here gets and to see like how noisy the fans are. So right now it's connected. Now I got you're going to need actually 3 major components. One is this board which controls the speed of the the fans it's a it's a it's a two it's a two fan controller with two probes and one is for the the sound the beeping i'm, I'm going to explain uh, probably on a separate video how it works but i'm going to go through a little bit so there are two probes other probe I use Kapton tapes to put them so one is you can see it right there 
right there. Use Kapton tape to tape it to the heat sink of the FPGA and the other one is just taped to the side. So again, this is the bottom of the monitor. This is the top part. This is for cooling the FPGA. And this one is just blowing out air, just hot air from the whole monitor. Now this controller obviously has two, two pin headers. These are uh, normal four pin PWM uh, headers. But the thing with this monitor is that the uh, the fans, they, they don't have a, a, a normal PWM uh, headers. They are mini. So what you need, first of all, you need to power this board and you can buy, um, you can buy a mini, uh, mini, uh, fan connectors and you have to connect them to these two ports right here. Let me see if I can show it to you, these two. So one is there and the other one is on the side, on the up. You see those two? The fans are connected to these and it's, it's controlled by the board on the FPGA. But what you want to do, you want to bypass that, right? You want to bypass that and control the fan speed and the RPM by this, by this board here. But you need, you need to power this board. So you need two, two cables. Uh, and you see these are connected. It's giving power 12 volts to this board with black and red and this is probably 12 volts and as you can see there are signs for plus and minus so make sure you you connect them the right way i think there's a diode in the board but just to be safe when you connect these two to the to, to the monitor board just connect it with the right polarity and the other two wires as you can see cut them and tape them. They're doing nothing. Those are the uh, the PWM signals. So we don't want to use them, right? We want to use the PWM that is coming from this port. And you see these converters, these two converters are connected to the fans, to these two fans. And I've used that converter, which is a, which is a normal PWM connector to a mini. I'll put the link on each part that I bought from AliExpress in the description of the video. But you're gonna need this board, you're gonna need two of these converters, and then you're gonna need two cables. But I am I haven't cut anything or soldered anything from the original fans. The original fans, they haven't been modified. I just cut uh, this side of these two cables and taped the, the, the yellow and the blue one. And I used the power that is coming from this board to power this, this controller. Now, how, how this board works, again, I'm gonna make another video, but as you can see from the, from the top, there are four LEDs. The ones on the top are for fan one and fan two. Now you see it's toggling by itself, showing some numbers. The first one, now you see, it's showing the temperature of the probe that I put here. So it's on the heat sink, that probe that is inside. That heat sink, let's see. You see now it's showing 56. And then the X10 means the RPM of this fan times 10. So it's so it's showing the with a temperature of 57 and the RPM is 870. The second fan, the probe is showing it's let's wait for it. Yeah, 
it's almost 29 degrees and the RPM is 1950. Now, if you press this first button, which is called OK, I think, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's called OK. You see the one that says OK? You're going to toggle between those numbers. So, what does this 30 mean? What does this 40 mean? I'm going to explain it. This, this 30 means that when, when the board starts, the fan is going to run at 30% of its capacity. So for fan 1, which is this one, uh, and there is another mood, which, which you, so there is one mood that you press it a couple of times and it's going to toggle. There is another mood that you hold it, so it has to be here, and then you hold it. And it goes to, you see, L, this is the lower temperature, and that's a higher temperature. So what does that mean? When you hold it, the L65 means, so keep in mind this value that you had on the previous, so this one, the 30, right? So the 30 means before it reaches that lower temperature, the fan is going to run at 30% of its maximum RPM, right? Until it reaches the 65. So any temperature, I guess from 0 to, to 65, it's going to be a fixed RPM, which is 30% of its maximum RPM. I'm going to I'm going to draw it on a paper afterwards and show it to you. So let's go to the first mode. So keep in mind this 30. Now if you increase this 30, so I'm increasing this 30 and look at this fan speed. So that is 100 going to the 100%. You see it's going crazy. So you want to keep this at something around 30. That's that's what I found is to be a good value. And this is the fan that makes the most noise and it gets hotter because obviously it's taking the heat from the FPGA. The other one usually you see it's showing the, the temperature of the let's see it's usually this probe is using is usually uh, showing the temperature of the room which is 28 degrees plus a little heat that is coming from the other one okay I don't want to make things complicated so let me just show you the values that I have for this one so 30 on this one for the first fan, the fixed value, before that lower temperature, and 40 for this one. I found that 40 is a little bit noisier, so I'm going to bring it down to, th to 35, and then press it again to make sure that it's applied. Now when you press it, long press it, hold it, you go to the lower temperature and higher temperature for fan 1. I don't know if it's clear, maybe if I turn this off, yeah, so it's better this without the lamp. And for the other one, let's keep it 80, and B off, I'm going to explain what B off is. You can have B on and off, like, let me explain it now. So B off is for the buzzer. If you have B off, that means if this, so let's say something gets stuck in this fan and it stops, if B is off, that means that the beeper is not going to beep. If B is on, the beeper is going to beep if this fan stops. So we're talking about fan 1 now, right? And then we go to fan 2. Same thing here. Lower temperature, higher temperature, and B off. But don't worry. Don't, don't get confused. Just put this as B off. So again, I hold this. I have it as L65, high 80. 
and for the other one is B off obviously for the other one is L45 H55 now let me explain what's going on so for this one I have it as fixed of 30 fixed of 35 but let's let's see if, if what happens if we increase this value you see this fan without reaching that temperature it's going to be fixed at 100 percent and the 100 percent the rpm of it is going to show i think it's around like 6000 rpm so that's for the first fan temperature rpm second fan temperature and rpm you see it's around 6400 so you want to bring this down to around 30 or 35 so the sound is not audible and also for the other one was 30 the lower one okay let me explain it on a paper maybe it's easier to understand now before I put everything on paper I wanted to show you guys uh, the test that I did on a on an extra board that I had so that's that one is already on the monitor this one is the extra one that I had so it is actually powered on by a 12 volt DC and it's going to a converter and it's just giving power but on the back of the board it says it should work from anything between 10 and 60 I'm using 12 volts and 12 volts is the same power that is on the board of the monitor feeding that that controller so this controller uh, of of plugged in the beep to show you there are two uh, NTCs which are the the temperature probes and I've connected only one fan here it's a coarser fan uh, it is not spinning you see and the reason is so you press once it says 10 and 10 percent I think is not enough uh, PWM or not enough voltage for the PWM to spin that uh, fan so let's increase that to something like 30 and make sure every time you you change something you have to press this again and and this is set now so right now it's spinning and so what's the temperature the second fan ignore it the first fan the probe is showing temperature 25 and it's almost running at so at 30 percent so 30 percent is almost running at 390 rpm rpm sorry i'm filming and writing at the same time okay so let's increase that fixed value to 100 to see what's the maximum rpm of that fan you see it's starting to ramp up from the noise 100 percent you press that now it's set so what's the rpm so it's 1530 you have to multiply remember everything by 10 so at 100 percent but again remember this is not the fan that we're using on the monitor the monitor i found out the monitor 100 percent rpm is around 6000 and that's why it's making so much noise but that's that's the corsair fan so 100 percent fifteen thirty so fifteen thirty rpm now let's go to the to the other mode so you hold that okay now you go to l30 so l30 is the lower 
temperature so before the 30 degrees this thing is gonna run at 30 percent as we said it right and then from from 30 percent which is lower temperature lower uh, temperature limit to 40 percent is gonna ramp up and if, when the when the temperature reaches 40 40 degrees is gonna go to the 200 percent right so let's and let's let me show you the b off as well so b off b buzzer is off now if i turn it on okay and let's say we disconnect this disconnect the fan let's see what happens oh i haven't i haven't set it up see now is is beeping right saying that fan one has stopped just be careful so plug it back in and the beep is gonna go away okay so let me see if I can show you something so let's make the fixed value something like 30 something like 20 maybe oh no that's the lower temperature. This is this is not something we want to change. We want to change. Okay. So fixed value. You press once, hundred percent. We want to change that to thirty. Or oh, let's actually make it stop. So let's go something lower, like ten, when it stops. And then you make sure you press. Now it's set. So at the fix, before that lower temperature, we want this to be running at 10%, which is stop technically. Now let's change the lower temperature. We want to set it to, let's say, 26. Let's change this one to 30. B off is fine. Second one, we're not interested. Okay, so you see now it's it's turning a little bit because because the temperature is above twenty five. But let me just warm it up. So I'm just warming this up, and you see. The fan is starting to spin because the temperature is going up. So it's reaching that lower temperature. And it's ramping up. 29, 30, and it's ramping up until it reaches probably 35. I don't think we can go to 35 unless we heat it up. Let's see if we can heat it up with a lamp. Give me a second here. So let's just turn that on. Turning the lamp on. Let's see if we can heat it up. Or maybe not, it's not going up. Yes, because I'm I'm using the right the wrong. Oh you get the idea. Maybe it's better to, okay. So let me just draw it and I'll show you. All right, so I, <laughs> I drew everything on paper and, and I hope you guys understand this, but uh, it's not too complicated. 
this is the the fixed value that you put before you reach that lower temperature and that's the higher temperature so for example here uh, you press this once you were saying okay before that lower temperature that we set which in this case is 25 we set it run everything at 30 percent again this might not be linear might be exponential or a curve like that because i found out multiplying that number doesn't give me the exact number but it, it should be good enough for for your understanding uh so we set the fixed value to be let's see Thirty percent. Lower temperature to be twenty-five, which is close to what we have here. Let's make it twenty-six, and then the higher temperature is thirty. Now it's set. So twenty-five temperature is twenty-five degrees. It's running around that four hundred, three hundred ninety RPM. Now. Let's heat it up, make sure that I have the right probe. So I'll heat it up. So 25 is going up. I look at the, the number and the fan. 27, it's ramping up till it reaches that 30 degrees, which is gonna be 100% RPM. Ignore fan two, fan one, 30%, 30 degrees, and it's going full RPM. And this is this is technically the graph. Obviously, you can change this value. You can make it 50% to be fixed, and you can change those values. But these are the two uh, two big sections that you have. You're running fixed before that lower temperature, and then from that lower temperature to that high temperature uh, is gonna ramp up. And I don't know the numbers here. It's gonna it's gonna be hard to tell. But uh, I hope you understand this. If not, if, I'm, if I confuse you, I apologize. Uh, leave me comments or, and sorry about the bad English, but uh, this is what I found because there wasn't a, a good manual for this board. Again, I put the, the link and description from AliExpress uh, that I bought. And one more thing that I have to mention for the monitor is that when you when you mount the board, make sure that you insulate the bottom. I use you see it here. I use a pad and I taped it. Make sure you pad it because on the bottom of the the board there are solder joints, and this is this is metal. So you're gonna you're gonna short everything to ground. So when you're putting this on, on the monitor, make sure you put insulation. Either tape it, I use the pad, and then I taped it. I, I found out the uh, Kapton tape is perfect. It's a little bit pricey, but it's perfect. I had it uh, in hand. And uh, electrical tape. Other than that, the I mean, the hardest part was to to opening this this monitor that was the hard part i have a little bit background uh on on electrical engineering i'm an electrical engineer uh, soldering but as you saw once you get the parts right it shouldn't be a, a something difficult and these are the fans again that i ordered from aliexpress i think the whole the whole project, including the, the board and the fan. The fans that were a little bit pricey from AliExpress, but if, if you, I don't think you need the fans to be changed. And the monitor, I've, I've tested it, uh, it's perfect. It's a perfect monitor. The, the sound from the original, uh, the noise, I mean, when you have it as, as connected to that board is just crazy. It makes it makes like it's so annoying 
but with this mod, and I give it all to to our buddy that I found uh, his his page on Reddit. He was so helpful. He introduced the uh, he did a little bit soldering. It was a little bit messier, but I think with with spending uh, with getting those two connectors, you don't have to mess around with the original fans. You can always plug them back in if you don't like this. Uh, you need this board. You need two wires. You need to cut uh, cut one one side and power up the board. And then you need two converters. The fans are already there. And then you just need to open up the the shell. Just make sure and don't blame me if you if you break any clips. But I did this probably five six times now, and I didn't. I didn't break anything, no dead pixels or anything, no, but just be careful when you're taking out that uh, ribbon and that wire because they're very uh, delicate. Uh, if, if you damage your monitor, don't blame me. Just be gentle, be patient, take your time, play around with it. Uh, the, maybe I, I, I show you, uh, like I, uh, I make another video showing up how, how I put that temperature probe there and I think the other thing that I'm gonna do in a in a couple of months is just open up here and change the the thermal paste on the FPGA itself I didn't want it to to go deep and and play around but after that this is this is like uh, this is the best monitor that I had it's a 4k HDR and I usually run it at uh, 98 Hertz uh, 4k HDR I play games in HDR it's amazing the 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 quality and the uh, the nits on this it can reach up to thousand nits uh, if, uh, so it's perfect for HDR it's just breathtaking okay thank you very much uh, thanks for watching if you if you like the video thumbs up if you have any comments and if you didn't like it thumbs down uh, leave me uh, reviews, leave me comments. Uh, sorry for the bad English. I, I know that I used the words actually and technically a lot. Uh, English is not my mother tongue. Uh, I hope you, you enjoyed the video. Thank you.